testing. I think they need it. I don't think Good evening, need. everyone. Welcome to the Thursday, April 4th, 2024 Board of School Directors Committee meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to start tonight's meeting with the election of the board secretary pro tempore. In the absence of both the president and the vice president or the secretary, the board of school directors may elect a president or secretary pro tempore for such meeting only, and the important appointment of such temporary officers shall be noted on the minutes of such meeting. Um, our board secretary is not here this evening, so I would like a, to make a motion to nominate Leslie Rizzi as t secretary pro tempore. Do I have a second? Any opposed? All in favor? Motion carries. We'll start this evening with a roll call, please. John Tacco. Here. Emily Evans. Here. Monica Grenegal. Here. Jim Happ. Ben Hill. Gerald Inman. Here. John Lucia. Here. Karen Geibel. Here. Freedom Area High School Student of the Month Awards, Mr. Turpin. Is this going to buzz? Nope. All right. It's going to be good. Um, well, good evening. Um, the month of April, the high school's theme was respectful. Um, and so our winners this evening, some of them are here tonight, and so when your names are called up, come on up and receive your award. Um, so our ninth grade female, the winner was Chelsea Parks. She was nominated by Miss Santa. Um, Miss Santa's comments, uh, Chelsea is a cheerful student who always, um, who is always extremely polite and has positive attitude. Um, and I can look forward to Chelsea uh, with a great smile every day when she comes into her, to her classroom. So Chelsea Parks. Our male for the freshman class uh, is Mr. Riley Henley. Uh, he was nominated by Ms. Nibala. Uh, he could not be here tonight because I believe he is um, doing track this evening. Um, Riley always shows the utmost respect to himself, teachers, and his peers, and the staff, and he never fails uh, to lend a hand uh, when he is asked. Our 10th grade girl for this year, um, for this month for respect, is Raylan Berenger. Is she here tonight? Nope. She was nominated by Ms. Waters. Uh, Raylan is a very respectful student uh, to, her, to the other students and to all the staff, and she is always willing to help out in class. Um, our male for the sophomore class is Landon Sondgrass. Come on up, Landon. He was also nominated by Ms. Waters. Uh, Landon is always respectful. He is polite and friendly towards the staff and his peers. Um, and although math may not be his favorite subject, uh, he's always willing to joke about it and a great attitude in class. So Landon Sondgrass. <laughs> Our junior female is Miss Tessa Rape. She was nominated by Miss Pessler. Uh, Tessa is always happy and ready to work in class. She is kind and respectful to all her peers, and in class she is always helping and explaining math to her classmates. So Miss Tessa Rape. Our male uh, for the 11th grade class is Mr. Austin Anderson. Austin was nominated by Mr. Dickey. Uh, Austin is a, is a great student in class and respectful to everyone. As he walks in from the halls, he always says hello to his teachers and students, and Austin always is respectful. Um, he always respects the ideas and the beliefs of all of those in the class. So Mr. Austin Anderson. And our senior class, our senior girl is Miss Alyssa Imhoff. She was nominated by Miss Keith. 
Uh, Alyssa is also always friendly, polite, and respectful to both adults and her peers. Uh, she has a great attitude and is willingness to learn and help others in the class. So Miss Alyssa Imhoff. And our senior boy is Mr. Chase Grable. I do not believe he could be here tonight. Uh, he was nominated by Miss Keith as well. Uh, Chase is a bright student who is always willing to learn and challenge himself um, and also willing to help any student in the classroom is very respectful to the educational process. So again, these are our winners for the month of April for Respectful. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, congratulations to each of you. We appreciate your positive representation of the district. We'll move to the middle school principal's 100 recipients. Any other, oh, do we have any other middle school students here? I believe we just have one here tonight. Come up here, Chase. You can stay right up here by me. All right, we're gonna talk about Chase a little bit. And I do wanna take a second just to read off the names of other students um, who have been selected for this. Um, so for our principals 100, we're looking for students who and I think this word's important, consistently show kindness to others, look out for fellow classmates, you know, are respectable to, to teachers, um, and just bring over all positivity to the school. And Chase here, um, he was nominated by Miss B about. She's one of our paraprofessionals in the building. And I really like what she wrote about him. His leadership in the classroom, helping others with assignments and problem solving together. Um, he also takes time to acknowledge and include others around him uh, with encouraging words. When I talked to Chase's, the rest of the seventh grade teachers, um, it seems like one thing that the common theme I've heard about Chase is he looks out for other kids. He's always looking to include people, which is something you want in a middle school. Um, always encouraging people to do their best, helping people when needed, and really just a good friend to all his classmates. Um, just on the side note, it was a lot of fun to watch this guy play basketball this year if you made it to any middle school game. So thank you, Chase. Good job, you have a seat now. And I do wanna just take a quick second to uh, read off some of the other students who uh, were selected for, for this. Uh, we had Chase Furman, Sierra Mikon, Madison Brown, Brooke Gleese, Nora Powers, Kaylee Stewart, Josephine Hall, Noah Lewis, Skylar Luracek, uh, Sophia Figgis, Tenley Fair, Juliana Euler, Logan Rosenberger, Richard Connor, Michael Frazier. We had two months worth of kids here. Um, Grace Friend, um, Ella Karzanek, um, Claire Evans, Haven Kill, Alexis Pfeiffer, Tia Yek, Isabella Varner, Ben Perry, Riley Tavern, Jamie Carr, Bryce Wagner, and Lincoln Murphy. Thank you. Congratulations to those students as well and maybe some extra bonus points for Chase, Mr. Griffith, for coming this evening. <clears throat> Public Community Relations, per Board Policy 903, Public Participation in Board Meetings, members of the public must preface their comments with their name, address, and group affiliation if appropriate. All comments should be addressed to the presiding officer, be relevant to business that is before the board, and observe required timelines. Prior formal request 10 minutes, informal request five minutes. Would anyone like to address the board this evening? Okay, we'll move to minutes, approval of the March 25th, 2024 board meeting minutes. Any questions, comments, or changes to those minutes? Seeing none, then we will approve the minutes. Superintendent's report, Ms. Workman. Thank you, Ms. Geibel. Um, just a couple of comments. First, I hope everyone had a very relaxing and enjoyable spring break. Um, we're now on the downslide to the end of the school year. It's hard to believe. But that being said, staff and students will be buckling down in the next few weeks as they complete their state assessments. Our PSSAs in grades three through eight will be, begin on April 22nd, and then Keystone assessments will be in May. Later on in the agenda, I will be recommending a three-hour early dismissal on Monday, April 8th, and that is for the solar eclipse. Unfortunately, our regular dismissal would fall um, into the partial and totality paths timeline. So with safety being our top priority, we want to ensure that our students are home and under adult supervision during this time. 
Dismissal times are for elementary school, 1250, and for middle school and high school, 1140. And these will be posted on the website, if approved, and um, via social media. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we don't have anything formal for finance committee tonight. Um, just please be reaching out with budget questions as we continue to uh, look to approving the budget in the next month. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I encourage anyone, you know, we've had the meeting last week and we, we've all had it. So again, if you have any more questions or comments, you know, please filter them to Sharon and Aaron to get, you know, to get your answers and, and then and then Sharon can uh, filter that to the rest of the board. So we're going through one one person, but you always can directly out, reach out to Aaron, you know, to get anything clarified. Thank you, Mr. Inman. We'll move to operations committee. Ms. Grenigal. Gary, would you like to come up and speak? Good evening. Uh, part of my report, um, we have began beginning to see the end of our spring preventive maintenance in all of our district here with our HVAC systems, basically the forced air systems. I'll be scheduling the boiler and the pump system uh, PMs here shortly. We've received quotes for repairs for elementary generator units. The repair work was awarded to Cummins Sales and Service. Departure on order and we'll be here soon. One of our quotes from another vendor, they did try to charge us a diagnostic charge of $949, which I was able to get them to lower that to a much lower rate. Uh, we did visit our Big Knob campus. All the cameras were checked. We installed new batteries and SIM cards. We did a complete check of the roof and the building conditions. Uh, we completed updating the elementary conference room by removing a smart board and projector. We patched and painted the wall, installed a new TV mount. In addition, there was new wallpaper installed in Mr. Perkins' room for our sensory students. We've had some plumbing issues with our drain lines due to items blocking the drains, which we've been repairing and addressing. Work on our district grounds have been picking up with the spring sports, baseball, softball, and track events. We've been adding infield mix and been working hard against the rain trying to provide our students an opportunity to play. We are currently gathering information regarding our baseball and softball fields for upcoming improvements. We completed a small upgrade to the entry of the middle school uh, ad administration office. New MCT leftover from the elementary construction was installed. Transition strips and a new entryway carpet was added. It actually costed the district $70 for the transition strips because we had all the other material on hand. Uh, I invite you to please stop up and see our new three quarter inch hard maple floor at our high school auditorium. Um, this, most of the floor was installed over spring break and then we will relocate the materials back onto the stage. And I did bring this here. The first piece here is maple that was installed in 2010. This is what we're installing now. You can see the, the, the difference in the material that we're installing this time on our floor. Is there any questions on any of that? No, that, that's just an example of, that was before Gary, and when we get something done and we don't pay attention to it, of, of what we got, so you all can see that. So that's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it should have been, that's what we should have had from the beginning. It's a shame, but if you don't have people on looking, uh, that's, that's, that's sort of what happens. Um, On that, so yeah, I know Gary's been putting a lot of time and effort, and uh, and I'll just no, I'm done with my report. Okay, <clears throat> and I don't know where this is going to go, but we can, you know, Gary can comment or whatever. But you all have your these are tractor quotes now. 
Gary and, and Mr. Tacco, and, and they've, put, they've put in a tremendous amount of time. Uh, myself, I've put in some time too, but I, I, I thank both of them trying to get, you know, we're going to make this a, a big investment here to get what we need, not necessarily the cheapest. And, uh, and I'll, I'll let John comment, and, and then if, if necessary, I'll make some other comments. So the Bobcat on there, we were thinking that would be the way to go, but once we looked at it, it's a South Korean tractor that um, it just runs down an assembly line with another tractor called Koya, and uh, I don't believe that's the way to go. My neighbor has one, he has nothing but problems with it. So then we just down to the New Holland and the Kubota. Are these, um, the New Holland and the Kubota, John, are they, I mean, are we comparing apples to apples or is these one level down? Because there's a significant cost difference, so I'm wondering why such a big difference? Or is it, you know, is the Kubota a better quality or? Well, when, what we, what I did is I did some research and, and the Boomer is one, is an upgrade from the workman, which is, you can see that, that was just added today, that last cost. And you can see the difference up there. But when you when you compare apples to apples between those two tractors, you're, you're getting a much better uh, tractor with with a lot more uh, usage. You know, the, 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 the uh, lift can lift more. Uh, you can see it with the, the if you put the uh, forklifts on there, you can see it where the, the, the regular workmaster, you can no longer, you can't see what you're lifting, you have to really look. Uh, the, 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 you have super uh, better on your seat, so whoever the driver is, if it's a rough, it, it's, it's taking the brunt of it with that, and then your, your different controls are much better on that. So when, when you're looking at, uh, again, if you're gonna compare apples to apples, you're probably, you're, you're looking at the Kabuda. Uh, and the, the boomer as being somewhat comparable, but uh, we would like to put our eyes on these two, actually all three of these tractors, look and see and, 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 and make and have a good update and come back to the board next week with our with our findings and, and so we can proceed from there. What my, my concern is if we, we get a tractor, okay, it's, it, this thing, it uh, should be 30 years or so, 40 years, I mean, if you take good care of it. The problem that we had, our Ford tractor, Gary, how, how old is that one? 1974, I'd say. Okay, so, <laughs> and, and that's, that, that's been good till now, uh, but the, the parts are getting tough, tough to do it. Now, we did buy uh, a Cub, but again, that Cub was an offspring of what this compact, uh, Bobcat would have been. It's just the company just to get another tractor, they put their name on it, and then a few years down the road, they go away from that company and they get another company and put their name on it, and then you, you can't get parts and they quit they quit making that one essentially. So that's on our our, our uh, Cub, right? Correct. Yeah. The Cub, Cub Cadet yeah. was made yeah. for th so between three to four years. Yeah. It was made by EMR for yeah. Cub Cadet. And then Cub Cadet dropped the line and Yimyar dropped the line. Yeah. So we have a 2008 tractor that there are no parts available, no rods. I mean, our pistons are leaking on it. There's, there's no parts available for it. Yeah. So we, we, you know, looking at this, we don't want to get into that anymore. We don't want to buy something that's, so these, the Kabuda and, and at least New Holland have, have been around quite a bit. And, and so we're, we're thinking as a group that that's where we want to be, but we want to make sure, you know, basically the, the workmaster is just a, a basic, a basic thing, and then if we need these other stuff with it, and again, if I look at that, what are 6,000 more over a 30 year period, it's not very much. So it's between these two and the other one. Yes. Correct, there's yes. one of the boomers left it's in St. Clairsville, and the Kubota they had on their lot up in Butler is sold, but there's more coming into their lot right now. 
So I, I know um, with the new Holland ones, they said if they sell that one, it could be up to eight months before they get another one in with the boomer. Yeah, so okay. it, it's just. So is the board okay with, um, let's make this as simple as possible, eliminating the Bobcat CT-235 on Gary and John's recommendation? Yeah, eliminating that one, they don't think that's is the one. So if we take that one off, are you also wanting to eliminate the New Holland Workmaster 35, or are you gonna look at that one? Yeah, well, we still wanna keep it in play. Okay, so those last three. Out, but it, it, I, I think we're gonna be between the, the, uh, the Boomer and the, and the Kubota. But I just wanna make sure, I just I guess wanna ask the question, if you know tonight, would you be okay with that? If, if, if not, then you gotta let us know. But we, we wanna put our eyes directly on these to to make sure we're, we're looking at what we're doing. Because my concern is when you're making an investment like this, and these are all close to our pricing, so we don't have to get the, 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 the cheapest one, you get the one that fits us. Yeah. So, but and, and a reminder to everyone too, these again um, are budgeted already, budgeted for in new equipment. So this would not be new money, this is <coughs> just positioned for the purchases. Okay, well, obviously, if you all can get to that before next meeting, there's some urgency, I think Gary said, with that moving off the lot, so. The other thing we were talking to talk about is a UTV, and we were recommending the Kubota RTV-X11. That piece of equipment will replace the current UTV that we purchased back in 2012 that we've already put $3,700 into with another $1,551 needed because the rear, the rear end came out of the other one. Mr. Taco came down and checked it over the one day. He can elaborate on that piece of equipment, but we use it to drag our baseball fields, our softball fields, we plow with it, we move material with it. Uh, using a regular tractor to drag your baseball and softball fields, you're just packing it in. So this has balloon tires on it, and this is more of a machine to get us long term other than the Cub Cadet model that we purchased back in 2012 for 10 grand. I put that in the email to everybody here again. Okay, any questions on the UTV? Okay, we'll be ready next week if you are ready. Yeah. Yeah. You can update us and then that can go on for approval, whatever recommendations we have. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. My son. <laughs> My son. So he's a. Uh, the, the other thing I just want to mention Gary sent out the pictures to everybody. I hope you had a chance to look at them. If not, please do about the clogged drains and the situations we have. I mean, it's, 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 it's a. You know, part of it's a shame that we have uh, students that feel that they have to clog the commodes and they think that that's a uh, thing to do here. Uh, I, I just very disappointing that for all the good stuff that we do here, and then you have something like that that taints it a little bit. So uh, I would hope that, you know, unless Diane, would anybody else want to comment? But yeah, that's just my. And I did just send you um, the results of reviewing the, the video footage, and um, there were multiple students that entered with um, water bottles in their backpacks, um, carrying them. All the students exited from what could be seen on the video with water bottles. So they could not pinpoint one specific student. Um, I know the high school have, you know, are trying their best to keep a handle on things and we just have to keep working with the students to make sure they understand. I wish we could have students come and see the work that has to be done when a toilet is clogged in a high school. Um, I wish they could participate in the um, declogging of that toilet, but unfortunately we cannot do that. Um, but for the students to see the impact that it does cause on our employees, um, I think that's important. So I know we have a couple of students here, if they could you know, spread their kindness, spread their, spread their wisdom, and try to be leaders in the school to say, gotta stop this business, so. I mean, Gary and his staff work hard keep this school up and running and keep everything under you know, the best that we can. And whenever we have situations like this where students clog the, uh, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's just goes against everything we're, we're doing here. 
and, and again, I say all the positive stuff we do, we do, it gets overshadowed by something like well, this. And it keeps him from doing other things that he needs to be doing to keep these buildings up and running, so. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll move to athletics, Ms. Rizzi. Mr. Mott is going to present the athletic director's report this evening. Mr. Badamo wasn't able to be with us tonight due to the middle school track meet, um, and I'll dive into that in a few minutes. But as always, uh, please make sure you're checking the Freedom Athletic page, uh, especially in the spring whenever everything's getting canceled, times are changing, uh, the weather hasn't been working with us lately. Uh, so our spring sports update, our, softball varsity, our varsity softball team is one, on, one and one, and our middle school softball team is 0 oh and one. Uh, varsity baseball is one and two, one and two through their scrimmages and one and two uh, through their season games. Middle school baseball team is one and zero. Oh. Uh, middle middle school volleyball team ha season has just concluded, and then in looking at our track and field, varsity has one has had one scrimmage. Uh, the girls are three and zero oh in their season, and the boys are one and two. Um, and then tonight was our first uh, middle school track meet. Um, and then later, in a few minutes, you guys will accept our boys' varsity basketball coach's resignation. Uh, he accepted a position out of state at a college. Um, so we're, our plan is after you guys accept that, we're going to post that position tomorrow. Any questions for athletics? Thank you. We'll move to our action agenda. Approved release time, student and staff travel. Brian Wargel, high school science teacher, collection of scientific data from the solar eclipse, April 8th. Penn West Edinburgh University, cost substitute and meals, we'll use school van. Ron Kelm, college and career readiness coordinator, United States Gypsum Corp tour, April 12th, Aliquippa, cost substitute and transportation. Accept monetary donation from alumnus. Accept donation of $3,350 from Freedom alumnus David Silkrowski for the purchase of the printer for the make and break class and motors for the robotics program at the high school. Approved transfer. Approved transfer of Teresa Lawrence from elementary school lunch monitor to food service substitute, $12.50 per hour, effective April 1st, 2024. Accept resignations. Accept resignations for the following. Alicia Irene Huber, paraprofessional, effective February 16th, 2024. Ruth Madison, food service substitute, effective March 27th, 2024. Jeremy Grubbs, head varsity basketball coach, effective April 12th, 2024. Approved termination of employee, approved, approved termination of employment of custodian Mindy Dugan in accordance with the statement of charges dated February 23rd, 2024, effective immediately. Approved three hour early dismissal time on Monday, April 8th, 2024 for safety reasons related to the solar eclipse. Any questions, comments on the action agenda items? I just wanted to say thank you to um, David Silkrowski in case he's listening, that was very generous. Yes, it's very appreciated. And just so you know, this is the second year um, that he has made a donation last year we were able to purchase a classroom set of middle school keyboards for Ms. Newman. And it appears that he just wants to continue these donations. So we very much appreciate his generosity. I might be lucky to this. Do we send thank yous? Don't, don't you usually ask to send thank yous for this? Yeah, Monty's gonna ask for our board secretary. Ms. Blue Dorn to send a... Yes, thank you. I was going to say not on Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> to send a thank you. I know. Nope, she's going to put that in the minutes, the, the original secretary. Any other questions, comments on the action agenda items? If not, I'll look for a motion to approve uh, items one through six. And a second? I'll second. Roll call. 
Leslie Rizzi, yes. John Tatko, yes. Emily Evans, okay. yes. Monica Bernadil, yes. Gerald Inman, yes. Michelle Michia, yes. Sharon Dyer, yes. Motion is approved. That brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. Thank you, everyone. And Sharon, I will just before we go, oh. I just have a question with <clears throat> concerning the, the busing. Um, with the amount of people that seem to be picking up and driving for the elementary and the number of kids maybe that drive at the high school, uh, can, can, we, can we send out a, a survey and try to see who needs busing and who doesn't? And, and then to, 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 to look at, uh, you know, because we have to make a decision once we go into next year at some point that we're committed to the number of buses. But uh, if, if, if our, our, our parents are going to bring them and we could cut down on a bus, that's going to save the district some money. And, 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 you know, it just it might be worth to verify that. I know that. Uh, New Shannick was, was doing a similar survey for whatever. I, I don't know um, about what theirs was particular about, but to me, it just see what see what kind of response, see what we can get to. Uh, uh, you know, especially with uh, you know our, our uh, you know when roads going out of business a year earlier than anticipated, we got caught where we had a. We just didn't have much options, and the new busing contract is extremely expensive, not only for us. There's other districts that would do the same thing. Ambridge, Central Valley, uh, you know, Aliquippa, they were all in the, the, the same boat, like, except we were one step ahead that we had ready to go with another contractor, and then that, uh, because roads went out early, stopped that. So... I guess, you know, just trying to self-contain that if all possible to some point. Since that is not an item on our agenda this evening for discussion, what we can do is have that placed on next week's agenda, um, and then we can have discussion. And in the meantime, probably Aaron could reach out to Nishanik and at least have information prepared that will speed I that she, sort of discussion up. She has looked into a possible survey um, earlier in the year, so I do believe she has some information, but we can certainly get as much information as we can. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you.